Hello. <laughs> Hello, and welcome to the Knit Girls. I'm Laura, also known as Lala. I'm Leslie, also known as You Don't Call Me Less. Today is Sunday, July 15th. Sure. Uh, 2018. <laughs> we are actually recording on a Sunday like we used to, except we didn't record last week because my on-call schedule was bananas, and there was just no time. So... Sorry about that. In the 45 minutes you were allotted sleep a night, Seriously. you didn't set to record a podcast? I mean, without exaggeration, I, a couple of the nights were like, I would get to sleep around 1, I would be woken up between 2 and 3 for an alert that I would have to go and log on and check a bunch of stuff. Then I would be able to sleep till about 3.30 and then get back to sleep sometime around 4 and then I would have a planned thing I had to be up for at 5 and it went like that for several days in a row. So, um, there was just no time for, A, I had nothing to show you. <laughs> Zero. And we still have nothing to show yeah. you. Don't, don't get too excited. <laughs> this is, this is true. Well, you have your aprons, right? I do. Okay. I finished those last night, and, um, thank goodness for that, so. It might be a quicker than usual show, even though we took a week off. Um, we've been doing a lot of prep for SSK, which is our annual retreat. So a lot of that stuff we cannot show you. We always forget how long, like, the administrative stuff for SSK takes, or I do anyway. Because Laura does, like, we each have our things that we do well. If you don't care about SSK, you might just want to skip this episode. <laughs> I'm just going to tell you that right now, because we, we talk about it a lot this week because that's what we've been working on. But, like, Laura runs the knit-alongs, and... Um, she and Gwen do the door prize tickets, and Laura handles all the goodie bag or the the door prizes and posting about the door prizes. Yeah, most of the blog posts in general. Mm -hmm. um, most anything that has to do with media, social media, or communicating with people, Laura handles. Um, I handle the money side. And Thank God. <laughs> I do not want her job. And like the administrative stuff, like spreadsheets Ugh. formatting lists and doing mail merges so that we can get everybody's name on badges without having to do each one individually and i highlight the badges <laughs> <laughs> and, the end <laughs> you know setting up invoices for all the extra stuff people you know decide they want for ssk which is no problem it just it takes a little bit of time so i always i guess i always forget how much time that takes no. we're mostly done with that stuff now the only thing i have left to do is pack everything which is fine because pack everything <laughs> because like a i have a 15 year old who i've already advised will be doing a lot of manual labor over the next couple days carrying crap yeah um up i don't downstairs. have a 15 year old but i don't have stairs yeah, either that's the thing like most of my craft stuff arrives i have a dog who's not helpful at all she'll lay in your way <laughs> yeah She's really mad because I blocked the front window. So oh, she no. Can't see out of it. Like, she is ridiculously upset. That's how she, you know, barks at motorcycles and <laughs> feral cats. Yes, that is true. That has been cut off. <sighs> okay, so knitting. Would you like to go first with your absolutely ridiculous <laughs> plethora of knitting? I cast on a sock for SSK because, um, well, okay. So I did a lot of knitting for SSK that I can't show you because it's something... So in SSK we have something called the tasting room. And the tasting room has wheels that you can try. It has drum carters that you can try. It has looms. It has um, spindles. And it also has knitting needles. And this year we have over 60 sets of knitting needles. And some of them never left their bags from last year because... I have several interchangeable sets, and a lot of times for SSK, I pick sizes that I don't use a whole lot, so I might have, like, threes. Mm -hmm. I rarely use yeah. a three. I can't tell you why, but I rarely use a three. I use fours, fives, and sixes primarily for all my knitting. So That's um, not socks. Yeah. Zeros for socks. Um, so I, we got several new sets of needles this year. We got the new Jimmy Beans, um... Ahead of the release date. Yeah. We're both a little stoked about that. <laughs> I'm very the stoked about that. The smart sticks that have the little sticks. inch marks. So they have inch on marks on them. Um, we got the circulars and double points for that. 
I got the new Chagu shorties, which I actually really, really like. Yeah, I want to play with those. Um, I have the whole set at the house, but I only have, I think I cast on with twos onto a 12 inch cable. But so Laura casts on with all these needles, yeah. just a little swat. Yeah, so I cast on and I knit a row usually. Um, and I had around 15 to 20 of those to do. So that, obviously I can't show you all that. But um, what we do do at SSK is we do these papers, and you might remember this last year from when we did the Licka, when we were talking about the Lickas, and people write down what they like and what they dislike, we need to make sure we have pens, um, about all the um, needles. And then eventually I want to share that with you, so when we talk about a new set of needles, I have that right there. That's the end goal. So we'll see if that happens or not. Um, so that was a lot. I um, we have Isabel Kramer coming to teach at SSK this year, mm -hmm. and I filled her classes, but I asked her in an email if she would mind if I sat in, um, and she said yes, which was very very kind because some that she doesn't have to do that. So I had homework to do for that, <laughs> which is basically swatches, which yeah. is not something that I didn't even bring it with me because it's drying because I'm blocking it before we do. Um, this, I have to seam the sides, like this much on the sides. Mm -hmm. So I'm taking set in sleeves and I'm taking top down knitting, hopefully. And the other thing is, everything has to be running smooth at mm -hmm. SSK for me to duck into a class, too. So um, that was the main knitting that I did this week that I can't show you. But um, I did just cast on a sock. And I am taking my other socks that I have on the needles with me, but those are a little bit more, they're patterned. So sometimes my brain at SSK does not allow for mm -hmm. patterned knitting. Um, so I cast on which what my default sock is, which is a toe-up sock. This is just the toe. And I've actually cast on with this yarn before, and Humberto yeah. has also stolen it. But the last time I cast on with it, I cast on on one and a halves, and that was terrible. They were way too big and not deep enough. What this is is Nomadic Yarns in the Bellatrix colorway. Um, and it is her sport weight. Yeah, her sport weight. So it's a little bit thicker. So I can use size ones with this. I held these up like they were zeros earlier. They're not their ones. I had forgotten. Um, when I was taking down my ball winder, I found a pair of needles. <laughs> it was not perfect, to rust. Perfect timing. Um, and then I tried these on. We got these nine inch mm -hmm. needles that are collage and they're square and they've got like an interesting bend in them and I tried with those and then Humberto ate the end of this yarn. He's very kind that Humberto. And um like I would have had to rejoin and uh, we needed them for the tasting room anyway so I just cast on again. That's a long story to tell you about my four rows of knitting <laughs> that I've done this week. And that is living in a fat squirrel bag. My judgy rabbits that I got at SSK a couple of years ago. And I'm super lazy, so all my bags still have their price tags. Mine do too. Because they're so small, you don't even think about them. Yeah. Um, so this, these are my judgmental rabbits from Amy Beth. And I love her sock size bags. They're perfect for socks. So that is the only thing that I have on the needles right now. It makes it look like she hasn't been working. She's had a lot of spinning stuff she's been working on. But I do. I'm also wearing a finished sweater. You do. <laughs> you are. Um, so the only thing I've been working on and even saying I've been working on it is probably misleading. Um, this is the Sevilla sweater by Amy Christophers. Mm -hmm. And it is knit at a Barocco Mykonos. And You've been doing some math with that, my friend. Well, I've been requesting other people do math. That is so there's the way this that it big works. teal square in the middle. Do you want to explain what's going on there? Yeah, so what I did after the last time we recorded was I outlined roughly four inches um, pre square. Yeah. Pre-blocked. It doesn't look like four inches now, and that's because, or it doesn't look like a square now. Oh. Uh, because I hung it to dry. I soaked it in, you know, a regular soak bath, and I, I kept the needles the tips out, out of mm -hmm. the water so they didn't rust or anything and then after it soaked for an hour or something like that I hung it on a clothesline so that the weight of the yarn could um because that's how it's going to hang on your body right. yeah and, and I knew that this would grow a little bit this way so I wanted to get an idea of the percentage of that growth um 
and I didn't feel like a small swatch would have done that true like true yeah. point, without adding weight to it so um, I knew that I was gonna have to knit a lot more than just this little bit so I measured it after and sent the measurements to Gwen and figured out that it was a 12.5 percent increase in um, this way up and length down. yeah so through the magic and mystery of math I uh, real I did some calculations and then made Gwen verify my calculations and then we measured you because we weren't certain yeah. about underarm to the length that you wanted right. it to be um, so from this little marker right here I've got 11 more inches to go so I've got a while <laughs> and it, there's no shaping for the arms or anything there's a little bit of neck shaping in the back but very very little so this will be my SSK knitting because it is stockinette there you go back and forth and that is all there is um, and I seriously doubt I'll get any knitting done anyway so <laughs> we always think we will yeah there's always well we do I every do. great now and then Laura does get a bunch done on a sock or something yeah I was gonna say I usually take a sock and when we go out to dinner if we get so the first night we take the teachers out to dinner and we do these scratch off tickets that are in the goodie bags and two is it two two people mm -hmm. two people get a scratch off for us to treat them to dinner with the teachers mm -hmm. so they get to go out to dinner with the teachers and um which is loads of fun but um i get knitting that's like the only time that we go out to dinner usually mm -hmm. that night and maybe saturday mm -hmm. night because saturday night the only setup we have is door prizes yeah. thursday night um we have Tasting room. Tasting room, which is very in depth and set up. Mm -hmm. And then um, Friday, we have the try it on room, which we're trying something a little bit different with this year. So I'm hoping it goes. Oh, yeah. Wait, no. What yeah, we... laundry hampers. That's the try it on room. Yeah, the try it on room. That's Thursday, not yeah. Friday. Try it on room is Friday, I thought. Oh, no. Is it. Wait, I'm getting them confused. I am now. too. Whatever's on the schedule is what we'll Tasting do. Tasting room is Thursday. Try it on room is Friday. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's where we're... We've only done the seven years. You would think we could remember what night was which. It all blurs together. <laughs> um, yeah, I think you're right. I think the... Now you have me doubting myself. I don't know. We already sent the schedule out, so whatever <laughs> the schedule says is yeah. what we'll do. But um, I think you're right, because I think the Try It On room, we give an extra day for people to bring stuff. Yeah. Um that's all I got. But you have a finished object. I do have a finished object. Oh, is that it for your sweater? Nothing else to say about your sweater? I have a finished sweater. So this is Jessie's girl. This is the cardigan version. There's um, a pullover. A pullover and a cardigan version. And it was knit out of Juniper Farm Zoe. It's hard to see. It is, um, let me go backwards. Let me stand behind the chair. It's like an obstacle course you just can't see. So it is a little bit longer. It's longer in the back than it is in the front. It looks like it's way longer on your left side than your right side. That might be a blocking error. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, when I blocked it, I swear I did the same. Yeah, maybe. It might be a little bit askew. It might be that you sat on one side. It could be it. And stretched it. <laughs> That's what I would have done probably. Yeah, one side is longer than the other. I swear I blocked them. Well. Maybe one of my boobs is bigger than the other. And it's it's not going to be that much bigger. <laughs> you walk funny. <laughs> anyway, it's all garter stitch. It's meant to be oversized. I did the largest size, but I did. Um, I was at the smaller end of that spectrum. I was the smallest size at this, of that spectrum. I think I'm a 46. So it is very oversized. It's um, knit basically straight up in garter. So it's a large rectangle until you get to the underarms. Use a short row shaping up here and then a three needle bind off at the top. And the sleeves are not actually sleeves, they're just that, it's it, like that boxy Yeah, thing. I was gonna say, it's kind of like the boxy where it yeah. just doesn't quite end right at the top of the shoulder. So I think I like it. I like it. I think You're it's something right, you could get a lot other. of wear out of actually. I think so too, and I think next time I wash it. I'm not going to block it to shape. I'm just going to throw it because it's cotton linen blend. I mm -hmm. think it's just going to go in the dryer. And if you don't like it, you can just block it again. 
Perfect. Because it is a little bit longer than I was thinking. But I'm okay with long because I'm super tall, which is why people can't see my head on the camera. <laughs> oh, you got some cleavage, too. It's very ex I dressed up for y'all so I could show you the sweater. I think I did sit on that side. Uh, that would be my guess, was you just sat on it and then... Because I, I blocked it stretched. two measurements. Because I have um, a blocking board that I got at my local yarn shop before they went out of business. When I worked there and got like 33% off of everything. Um, and it has like individual squares. If you ever follow me on Instagram, you've probably seen it because I post some blocking pictures of my goldfish memory. Unless Liz goldfish memory. I have two of them actually, so I can get that length. And I still needed for the goldfish memory some uh, foam kids mats. Oh, really? Yeah. For mine, not for yours. But I need to make sure I pack goldfish memory. Um, but yeah, that's it. This is my finished object. So I knitted a sweater in, a, what was it, 11 days? Like you said, nine days. Nine days. And it's, um, it was just under 1,200 yards. So not bad. Mm -hmm. I don't know that I'm, I, I have three more skeins of this yarn that I bought to do a vest last year. But it is very splitty. I would say definitely do duller wooden needles. Yeah, it. yeah, it does look very splitty. Just because so. they're because it is cotton and linen, so it's two different textures. Yeah. And for the most part, you look at it and it just completely molds together. But every now and then, you can see one stitch where part of the ply is shinier than the other. So I could see how it would split. Yep. So it and it's pretty low twist as well. So this will go in the try it on room whenever night that is. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Whatevs. But um, that's it for me for finished objects. Do you have any finished objects? Um, you have aprons. Yeah, I was going to talk about that oh later. Oh my gosh. My favorite things. Um, I did do some spinning. Maybe strong for me. <laughs> but I didn't bring it with me up here. So um, it's all like wet. and. Well, it is. So today outside it is 107 degrees with the heat index. I need one of those grippy things. I know. Do you have your signature needle one up here? No. I'll get it open. <laughs> yes. I'll Leslie's going to do stuff. I'll show you my spinning while Leslie's doing that because she's my hero. And she forgot hers downstairs, so she'll have to talk about it another time. So, this is my big bag of stuff. For spinning, I finished three knit spin farm bats and one braid of Into the World. And then I will tell you my story of woe. So, um, my Knit Spin Farm Bats, there are three of them, and Joanna Springs is amazing. This is the Tea Party colorway. I don't think she does repeatable colorways. It's very pastel, like, but with gray undertones. It's a uh, Blue Face Luster Cordale Falkland Merino Sorry Silk Shetland Silk and Silk Noil Blend. That was 3.5 ounces. I spun it to ply woolen on my Shocked Reefs, um, and I got 285 yards. And this is staying with me. And then on my ladybug, I spun one of her club shipments. This is called Scattered Rainbows. Leslie has this one too. Man, you're amazing. Um, <laughs> you you missed my first spinning. This is my first spinning. Oh, pretty. Doesn't it remind you kind of like mermaid tears? It makes me think of like a soft flannel blanket. Ooh, that's true. So that one's staying with me. It's really light. Wool and spun? Wool and spun. Two ply. On the shock reeves. And then this was spun on the ladybug. It Ooh. was not wool and spun because I wanted to chain ply it. You have this too. You have this set yeah. in your stash. The little individual. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. It's called Scattered Rainbow. And it was around three ounces, 135 yards of a chain ply. And this is going to be an SSK prize. One of the scratch offs mm -hmm. is hand spun from Laura. So this is going to be one of those. And it does the Roy G. Biv color progression because that's how I spun it. So it will be, I think, a great hat, 135 yards, or a cowl. Or it could be a yoke of a sweater, like a color work yoke. Yeah, I could. It's um, got a bunch of sari silk in it mm -hmm. every once in a while. That's that green. Little pops. Of yeah. And it's also um, pretty... I don't want to say it's bulky. It's probably like a worst weight. So, yeah, I'm happy with that. But I'm I love it. But I want to give it to someone at SSK. And then this is going to be a hat for Wheezy. 
Oh, that's very wheezy. This is another Knit Spin Farms bat. This is The Missing Pieces. Leslie has this one as well because this was part of her club. It has like a gray, a dark blue, and pops of orange. It was Dorset Horn, which I loved. 36% Dorset Horn, 30% Falkland, 18% Cordale, 16% Targi, and then Sari Silk. I spun this, again, woolen on the shop. And, I, and I, it's nice and light and airy, mm -hmm. but also um, I just love it. And I, it went from like dark blue, gray in the middle, and then orange. That's how it was layered. And I just split it in half. So the orange meets up with the dark blue a lot. And then there's kind of like a gray section in the middle. I think it's muted. Wheezy will approve. Yeah. Wheezy's favorite color is orange. Wheezy is my father. If you don't know, he went swimming in Lake Michigan with his phone the other day. <laughs> it's quite a tragedy because they are not waterproof. And then the last spinning that I have. Oh, that's I really want to keep this one, but I know that I can get more of this fiber. Joanna Spring, she only does like one of a kind, right. but I definitely can get more of this. This is Into the World in the um, Rock, Paper, Scissors, Lizard, Spock colorway, and it's Targi, so it's got a lot of bounce to it. It was spun fractally, which means that I split the fiber in half, and um, one half I just spun ends of tips, so it had long repeats of color. And the other I divided into three separate sections. So it should be really, really interesting when it knits up. And this is going to also be an SSK door prize. This was spun on the ladybug. I felt like it was taking forever and that's because it was 420 yards. So it was um, 460, but I took off 40 yards because it did poof a little bit. Might have been so I just ambitious decided to about take how much you took off. Well, we'll but see. better to underestimate. Yeah, I figure for someone else, it's probably better to underestimate. Um, yeah, so I like this. One. It does. Ha this has like that squish factor. All my stuff gets washed in soak celebration because mm -hmm. it's the best. It's my favorite. I also like what's their other one that I like. I like yuzu, and I like the citrus. I like one, but yuzu. I don't know if they do citrus they anymore. They don't anymore. They got rid of their three original scents. Um, there's another one that I like that just came out. Is it the Ravelry one? No, that's a good one. I don't think they do that one anymore. Pineapple Groove, maybe? I don't know if that's I like Snowman. Pineapple Groove. Anyway, so this is my spinning. I have another Knit Spin Farm bat on the wheel still. That one was actually a double bat that I bought, so it's six ounces. The first three ounces is spun. The next three ounces is on the wheel, and I forgot to grab that first bobbin that I had finished. I also have, which I finished today, on the wheel, um, uh, the fiber that's in the goodie bag oh, yeah. for SSK, but I can't show you guys that because the SSKers have to see it first. So I spun up a sample of that. So that'll get plied tomorrow as well. And I also have been spinning a couple other surprises for SSK as well. So that's been fun. Um, so my tale of woe. So I love watching Tour de France as I spin. That's like my thing that I watch. And then Jessica and I and Lynn discuss it at great length. And I just ignore and that Leslie group text. And Leslie ignores that group text. But um, I really like it. And so I was spinning away, spinning away on Thursday. And then my wheel stopped moving. And I was like, what? And I heard like a thud. And uh, I was spinning on the Landrum. And I was spinning on, I could have brought that too, uh, my owl for Harry Potter House Cup. I'm doing a cable ply out of some Hello Yarn Merino Silk blend. So first off, I hate Merino Silk. I hate silk in general. Um, to spin, I just always get too skinny and it just, it's not my, and some at times I have to like pull out chunks and it's just not my favorite fiber to spin. I'm like that weird person. It's okay. Meh. Um, so I'm spinning away and I finish the first bobbin and I'm like two thirds of the way through the second and this is going to be another chain ply or I'm sorry, another cable ply experiment where it's cabled with a silk thread. Um, and this is the second of three cables that I'm supposed to get done for house cup. And my whole thing was, I'm going to get this one done before SSK and then I'll do the last one, which is a thick and thin cable after SSK because I'll still have a week. And I'm taking a class on cables because 
I can't take just two classes. I'm sneaking into three <laughs> with a uh, jazz turtle. So I wanted to get some advice from her. So I'm spinning along and clunk. And um, my the Lendrum wheel, the treadles are connected with these two pieces of solid. They almost look like aquarium piping. Like clear rubber. Yeah. And one is longer than the other. And one... Um, there's this beam in the, so there's a beam here and they're attached by these two things. It's a footman, I think. Yes. They're called footman connectors. Mm -hmm. And so, so the my footman is the piece that moves the wheel, like the, the wheel part. And it's, then, it's like a rocking motion yeah. on the laundry room. Oh, okay. Um, and it connects the treadles to that. Mm -hmm. That's that they, they're connectors. Um, and I've never switched them on this wheel. I got this wheel. It was a gift from a friend. She probably had it several years before me. I think I got it in around 2010-ish. Maybe sooner than that. Maybe. Maybe 2011-ish. I can't remember. So I've had it at least seven years. And um, it was when we went to D.C. to mm -hmm. visit Wendy. Um, so I've had it for a while. And they're supposed to be clear. Mine were not. They were yellow. Just with age, yeah. Yeah. And they broke. So just the longer one piece broke. So um, I had an immediate panic attack, like legit hyperventilating, like, because I'm, I'm, normally if it was just me and it wasn't an owl spin, if it was just me, I'd be like, okay, I'm going to order that piece online and I'll get here in like 10 days. It'll be fine. But I have people borrowing that wheel at SSK to take classes. So it was just, and at least it didn't happen at SSK while someone was taking the yeah. class, because that would have been terrible. So Jessica's had this happen before, and her husband got nylon rope and used that. But you also have to have a special screwdriver for this. It's not a regular Phillips or flathead screwdriver. It's a square screwdriver. It's like an Allen wrench with a special tip. So I call my mom in tears, hyperventilating, and she's like, I have those pieces at home, but I'm not going home because <laughs> she's coming directly from Michigan mm -hmm. to SSK. So um, I called the Woolery and they weren't able to help me. And mom had said, well, I got mine at the Yarn Barn of Kansas, which is where I bought my Lundrum Saxony. And they are the nicest people anyways. Um, they go to Ply Away every year and they're just super nice people. We met them when we went to what's that dive school that we did with yarn school yarn. yeah we went to yarn school and it was super fun and i like to do it again sometime but um we went to yarn school and we stopped there on the way mm -hmm. and the lady on the phone was the sweetest human being ever and she calmed me down and she told me she would make sure that they went out in the mail that day and after she hung up with Laura, she was probably like, you would not believe. <laughs> She's like, I have them in my hands. I'm putting them in a priority envelope right now. We'll just go ahead and send them to the retreat center. And they got delivered on Saturday, by the way. So it was two days. Um, from Kansas to Tennessee. From Kansas to Nashville, which is amazing. Like, anyway. Um, but that wasn't all. But that wasn't all. So that was the first. That was at like 9 a.m. And then Leslie got off work because she got off call and we went to lunch and I kind of like calmed down, cheese fries, kind of like calmed myself down a Slowed little bit. Slowed down her veins, you know. <laughs> and um, I just kind of chilled for a little bit. And so I was plying the rain, no, it wasn't the rainbow because I applied that on the, I was plying something. And oh, it was the missing pieces bat from Joanna Spring. And um, the one design feature that I really don't like on the Hanson is it opens from the back and the back opens and in order to get the bobbin off, you have to push it away from you. And I've broken my flyer before. Doesn't the Lindrum operate that way too? But the Lindrum's on an angle. Okay. So the Hanson's flat, so you open this back piece and you push it away from you. The Lindrum's on like a- uh, Angle. Like an 18% grade maybe where um, you open it, but you still have kind of control because gravity is bringing it back towards you. Plus the bobbins on the Lendrum are like that big. <laughs> they're very small, they're three ounce bobbins. They say they're four ounce bobbins, they're not, they're like three ounce bobbins. Um, the Hanson, I have my eight ounce Wooly Winder flyer on, so it's a big bobbin and I go to push it off the end and it slipped and it hit the floor and my bobbin from Acreworks broke into. 
And then I had another freak out. <laughs> Not as bad because I didn't know if I could get the, let me get a, let me show you a picture of what this looked like. I didn't know if I could get the yarn off the bobbin in one piece. So I'm going to go on my Instagram because I posted it there. Um, because the whirl had completely come off. And so I had like yarn that wasn't really attached to anything, kind of floating. But luckily this was my Wooly Winder flyer. So the Wooly Winder puts things on in an even motion. If it had been any other flyer, I would have been screwed because um, I do not put things on on an even motion. <laughs> I definitely, my mom yells at me to change my hooks when I'm spinning all the time because I get like big like ant hills. And then once it gets big enough that it's collapsing, I'll move it. <laughs> but luckily it was the label and under flyer. And it was completely my fault. It was totally my luck of the day. Um, that white piece is actually the where the ball bearings are. So this is actually one of his black um, core bobbins. But that white piece is where the ball bearings fit in. So I was upset. But I did not expect Aiden to do anything for me because it was my fault. It slipped out of my hands. It, you know, it only fell probably a foot and a half because it was on a Zooka bag mm -hmm. to the floor, but it was my fault completely. And Aiden and Jill are the nicest people ever because both of them contacted me within minutes <laughs> and were like, we're shipping you a new one. Don't worry about it. We'll ship you a new core. It's not a big deal. So I told them not to ship one to me um, because... I'm going to see Aiden on Friday at SSK. So we're going to save on some postage. But I was not, ex it was totally my fault. And I was not expecting them to do anything. And I didn't ask them to do anything. Um, it was just kind of the luck of that day. So. But I feel like they, they stand behind their product. Oh, big time. This isn't like. This is probably the fifth bobbin of theirs I've broken. But I also want to say this isn't like podcaster privilege. They're like this. They're very responsive to issues with their products. So. Oh yeah, definitely. Because when I this was um, a bobbin that I won last year in Tour de Fleece. Like I didn't even pay money for this bobbin. Mm -hmm. It was a prize that I won for being on their team, which is an awesome team. Um, last year, and I won a bobbin of your choice, so I picked out that one, and um, it was just it blew me away how kind they are. But when I posted that I had broken it, someone else said, oh, I did that too, and they replaced it. So, And Aiden's working on a ball winder. That's awesome. I know. I'm super stoked. I'm always happy with their products. Oh, I love their... Um, I just got... Actually, that same day on Thursday, I got two bobbins and a butterfly cake came in the mail that I had purchased when they were released. I love their new butterfly cake. Per uh, it's super cool. So... We'll have that in the tasting room as well. And they're just very generous people. And the yarn barn people were ma marvelous as well. So that is my tale of woe. Luckily, my luck has changed. I think Wheezy did the third because he, uh, well, I broke my radio in my car. So that's three. That is annoying. So I have no, I don't know what happened, but it's not turning on. So, um, which I can survive without a radio. I'll just, my phone, I have an eight, an iPhone eight is the speaker is loud enough that could also probably it's take fine. that to Keith when we get back and yeah. ask him to look at it. Or Michael. Michael actually is decent with electronics. During the day, um, during like my average life, my commute to work is less than five minutes, so yeah. it never even comes on. It's just that I'm tutoring like 20 minutes away, so I've been listening to the Knit More Girls and Knitting Pipeline mm -hmm. and Carolina Fiber Girls and some other audio podcasts because it's, you know, back and forth. Um, and now that we're coming on a trip... So I'm already losing my voice before SSK. That's superb. I need to remember to get honey drops before we yeah. leave. I thought about that today when I went to Target and spent like $25 on hair products. <laughs> because that's what I need. Let's look at our haircut. Did you guys notice? It looks so cute. Mm -hmm. This is the um, <laughs> I showered an hour ago look and just did a scrunch. But when I left the salon, it was all like beautifully stacked layers. <laughs> and I was like, I can totally do this. And I went and bought the round brushes and the cream stuff she recommended. And I spent like 45 minutes trying to recreate it yesterday. Aww. No. I mean, the, are you going to straighten it? The general shape. Yeah, normally I will. Yeah. But I didn't want it to just be wet for a recording. 
but um, you know, I, I could not replicate it. Also, when I spend that much time on my hair, I get sweaty. Oh yeah. I'm glad it's not just me. Oh yeah. Like I get totally. sweaty easy because I'm a fat lady, but still, like I'm just sitting there. You know, all I'm doing is rolling my hair and, and using a blow dryer, and my face is all like. Sweaty. I'm gonna use the cold. Yeah, that's what cold I Cold blast. But I do that with uh, when I'm doing like more in depth makeup too. Mm. Like that's I get smart. super sweaty, but also I cold blast. That's very smart. It's like I watch Queer Eye. <laughs> um. Yeah, but I wanted to try an undercut, which is Amy Florence oh, no. has, Lady Amy Florence. She's wonderful. She's stranded Dye Works podcast. And um, so I talked to her a lot about it and like the maintenance Ooh, and stuff. But, yeah, so I like got half of it cut, like buzzed in the back. Do you like that aspect I do, of it? actually. Good. It makes it like much easier to wear it down without getting sweaty because mm -hmm. like half my hair isn't there. And when I wear it down, you can't even see it. So yeah. I'm down for it. So I'll be interested like to see do designs how, and stuff. Yeah, in it. my children do that. Really? <laughs> yes, they do. I was thinking I should draw like knit stitches and have they Monica also do like it. dye the underneath yeah. of the undercut. I've seen so that, when they do pull it up, it it's like it's a pop different. of color. Yeah. I'll be interested to see how it how often you have to do the upkeep on it. Yeah. Well, it's like once a month. Yeah. Every four to six weeks, just depending on how fast your hair grows. But um, I like this. Is the first time I visited that hairdresser, and I like her. So oh, good. I think I'll go back to her. Although I did hear about everything from her 30 year marriage to her divorce to her kids to her grandchild on the way to her neighbor and the feral cats in the neighborhood. Like, I where does she live that she's got feral cats? Midtown. Oh, yeah. And apparently, like, strays are a huge problem in Midtown. They are. So, uh, anyway. Um, what else? <laughs> so, I do have some spinning, but uh, I'll still be spinning it next time we record. So, I'll You're just doing show a yak then. silk blend, right? Yeah, it's an Into the World um, Hijinks is the colorway. Ooh, that's a good colorway. And it's a Merino Yak Silk blend. And it's the first time I've spun that. And I like it. We'll see, you know, how it goes. Um... I was able to spin for like, you know, 10 minutes at a time while on call, which was nice. But even so, I only got two ounces done in a week. So what's good though when you're spinning thin? Yeah. You well, are. my thin is different than your thin. Um, let's see. <laughs> Book wise. I feel like that's the title of the episode right there. My thin is different than your thin. <laughs> No, the Aww. episode title is going to be Walk Funny. You talking about your boobs being... Oh, <laughs> that's true. I decided that as soon as I said <laughs> it. But that's going to be the episode title. Um, so as far as reading, I've had zero time for reading this week. So I have absolutely no book, like reading book books to talk about. I did. I have been listening to audio books. Um, uh, I did try listening to The Innkeeper Chronicles by Alona Andrews. I've, Again? I've read all three of them several times. Twice, two or three times. Um, and then I tried listening to Innkeeper Chronicles a while back, and mm -hmm. the southern accent of the yeah, lady just I, made me crazy. Yeah, I would agree with that. Um, but I tried so again. again. <laughs> Um, to make you crazy again? Because I had, like, these aprons took so much longer than I thought they would that I, I truly needed something to listen to that I didn't have to pay a ton of attention to. Um, yeah. And I already had the first one in my library, so I thought, okay, well, I'll try it. And I got used to it, so it didn't bother me. Oh, so that's good. I've listened to the second one. And I've got the third one ready to start later tonight. I'm ready. For, I'm ready for them to finish the fourth one. Mm -hmm. Like they took, so she's having some serious medical issues right. where she can't type, and so I can't be like, "Hurry up! <laughs> you need to finish this, even though you're in constant pain." Yeah. And typing makes it worse. Let's talk about this. Like that yeah. would be terrible. And she's a knitter, so I hope yeah. she can still knit. But it's like finger issues. Mm -hmm. It's worrying me for her. Because as a knitter, like, that would be my... If you couldn't use your hands anymore, then uh, that would be a, a bad thing, yeah. That would be terrible. Um, so I've listened to the first two of those, and then split in between those, I listened to a book called Into the Drowning Deep, which was really weird. Um, 
So it's presented as this sort of mockumentary, um, like science fiction network, like the sci-fi network, um, launches these investigations in to go and find like Bigfoot or Chupacabra or all these. Uh, and in one of their missions, is it Loch Ness they go one? to find mermaids. Oh. Um, in the Challenger Deep, like the deepest part of the ocean. Yeah. Somewhere. Um, and the ship full of, you know, scientists and media people and all that, uh, ends up completely abandoned and there's nobody left on the ship. But I feel like this is like a sequest. But there's blood and stuff everywhere. And so years, you know, five years later, they launch a follow up like, oh my gosh, this is Sequest. And they're looking for mermaids. And what do they find? Are you going to ruin the whole thing? I won't, but I will say it's really weird in like a sort of dry scientific way. I, I don't know that I've ever <laughs> read a book quite like it. Um, because when you think of like Lovecraft style books, a lot of the times it's told in such a matter of fact way, but it's very fantastic. And this is, I don't know how to describe it. It's just, the people almost seem to lack some sort of like empathy and I, I don't I don't know. It's really hard to describe. Um, and you do find out that there is major sexual dimorphism between males and female mermaids. In this particular book, anyway. Huh. Um, and I won't ruin it by telling you how, but... Hmm. It's, it's interesting. I don't know. This is something that I would You like. would hate it. You would okay, not good. like it at all. Um, but, for some pe but for people who are more interested in science fiction versus <laughs> yeah. um, fantasy, it might be something to check out. Um, there are... Uh, gay relationships discussed hmm. in it, but nothing graphic or anything. Um, straight or gay. And that's it. That's all I've read or listened to this week. I've been listening to the Marcy Thompson series. I am now on, I just finished book three last night. They're around 11, 10, 11 hours each. And I've just been listening to those after Tour de Fleece, Tour de, For Tour de France, is like maybe three to four hours a day depending on the stage and so I've been listening to these after that as I spin my little fingers to the bone um this book three is hard I forgot she got raped in it until oh, like yeah. halfway through the book and then I was like oh I do know who's oh, killing yeah. those people and this is not gonna and so listening to the rape scene was much more difficult than reading the rape yeah. scene because I think like because as readers you just kind of like can, you yeah, can skip. skip yeah you can skip you can be like, like I know oh. bad things are happening but if I just go a couple pages ahead it'll be okay yeah yeah but with audio it was a little bit more intense so yeah. that was last night um, so I'm about to start book four. I think there's like 12 in this series. I think I got through four or five, and I don't think I've, I think I, I, I needed something different, and then I forgot to go back. Yeah. So. I own through four, and then um, my local library had five and six. I've already downloaded them. I have 21 days to get through them, so we'll see. But I do have a three and a half hour mm -hmm. car ride each way coming up, so we'll see how that goes. I don't know that Pearl would be super into this. She doesn't really get a vote. <laughs> That's true. She's going to be lucky if there's room in the back for her <laughs> at this point. She might be a front seat passenger. <laughs> mm, we'll make it work. I'd rather put two wheels in the front. Usually I end up putting two wheels in the front and then I'm like, shit, if my air... Sorry, y'all. <laughs> if my airbags go off, this is going to be really, If your airbags really go off, bad. you've got other problems. Well, that's true, too. But, um, but Pearl has a puppy seatbelt in the back. Much to her dismay. So she's super safe. <laughs> and that's about it. You have aprons, though. I do. So last year, Laura and I 
I, well, I made Laura and I these um, aprons that we wore. Because they're amazing. Well, mostly they had a lot of pockets. Which is amazing. And Mom had made me apron, had made us aprons before, but they were like... The, the half apron. ones, like yeah. the craft fair ones, yeah. Which were very useful, but I had a hard time keeping them up. Like the, 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 the tie ties would, would loosen. Yeah. yeah over the course of the day and like for me they would get tied directly below my fat roll so yeah. in all the pictures emphasize it was amazing yeah um so last year i made laura and i just some very simple pinafore style aprons with and i pockets wore mine at work all year long too <laughs> my and, dinosaur apron um they were really useful so i decided this year i would make one for our helpers as well and then I decided, well, Mama Linderman really needs one as well. And uh -huh. then I thought, well, I could make a couple as door prizes <laughs> as well. Because other people, you know, a lot of people mentioned that they, they liked them. Yeah. And I don't know if they were just being nice. Maybe and we do a charity yeah. door prize thing where the uh, proceeds go back to the Scarrett Bennett Center mm -hmm. to help with some of the things that they do. Yeah, some of the community um, support projects that they do. So in my head, I, I had forgotten how long these take. Um, it's like giving birth. It's like SSK prep. Yeah, you forget how bad it is. And not bad, how involved it is. Uh, but yeah, so cutting the fabric, probably 30 to 40 minutes per apron. Um, then, well, pre-washing first. And I can't help because we've already learned that I'm a little bit wonky and a tad bit askew. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so pre-washing it. Then cutting the fabrics about 30 40 minutes per um, for me. Now, maybe you can do it in 10 minutes, I can't. Then assembling it because I do um, faced aprons, so there's a, there's a fabric for the pretty side, and then there's a backing fabric as well, just to give it some more stability. So, and each of those sides has three pieces, so sewing the sides together and then sewing the sets together and then flipping them inside out and then pressing them and then joining the straps to the top and then top stitching all around. Um, so anyway, I think each apron was probably like three to four hours of work, um, which I wasn't quite prepared for, but it is what it is. So first I will show you, um, there, there's the other one. So first I'll show you Laura's. This is my apron. I had to use a contrast for the inside pocket. What's the contrast? What is that? That's one of the giveaway fabrics. Oh, it's like yarn balls. But I like I liked the color contrast together. So this is Laura's. Look, it's got sheepies. And it's got, it's a pinafore style. So they're all like this. They You just slip them on over your neck and shoulders. Yep. And um, they all have simple linings, just like a white or an off-white. So Laura's are sheepies. Um, this is Stacy's. Stacy of Tempted is one of our helpers this year. Um, formerly of Tempted. Formerly of Tempted. Her name is still Tempted on Ravelry. So this one is hers. This was a spoon flower fabric. Um, and then this one is mine. This one is like a pointillism. Um, fabric with daisies. I liked it. Then this one is for Sarah D. I like that one. That came out super cute. This was also a spoon flower fabric. And this one is for Mama Lineman. <laughs> She's a master gardener, yo. Yeah. Uh, this fabric I actually found at Joann's. And I thought it was perfect for Mama Lineman because she is always in the garden and if you eat a meal at her house you are probably eating something she grew herself. Truth, at least in the summer months. Yeah. Um, and then I also made two for door prizes. Gwen doesn't get an apron? She wanted the linen kind. Oh, okay. So I ordered her the linen kind um, because she's going to use it also for her conservation and yeah. all that so it made sense. So this is number one for ones we're giving away. This is just a very simple. It's cute. Um, geometric design. I like the gray. And there's a light and a dark one. And the dark one is this very abstract 
geometric pattern. This one's the softest of all the fabrics. Where did you go? Oh, it is. Joanne's. Nothing, huh. I mean, it was nothing crazy special. It was a, they had it in their like modern quilter section. Yeah, it's cute. But it, it was, almost looks like yarn balls. Yeah, that's why I got it. Cause I thought, oh, you could sort of mistake it for yarn balls. So those two will be door prize items for SSK. Cool. As long as I remember to pack them. They were packed and then I unpacked them so that I could show them. So, um, we need to pack them again. Yeah, I'll pack them. I'll take mm -hmm. them downstairs when I go downstairs with you. So that way I'll put them right back in the bag. Excellent. Um, what else? We're still doing stash dash. That will continue. We are. Through, uh, August 27th. Yeah. Close to the end of August. And then Carl's adoption day. Oh, we're still doing the self stripe, uh, knit along, sock mm -hmm. knit along. And I haven't put up the FO thread because I'm going to go shopping for the prize at SSK. Oh, okay. So then Is I'll it put it be up a self striping we'll sock. I might. I it might it be Vesper or Ruck and String will be there. Yeah. Um, so we'll see. Or it could be some really cool sock soap from That's cool. Tough Tough Woolens. Woolens. We'll see. Oh, and uh, Spotted Circus, Alpacas does self striping as well. Oh, really? I don't think I have any of hers. Hmm. I'll have to I check do. that out. Um, so yeah, we'll see. We'll see what happens. And then we'll we're gonna, do our Patreon draw after SSK. Yeah, we're gonna go shopping for Patreon prizes at SSK too. Mm -hmm. As you do. I've got a little toe. You're still increasing? Yeah, I've got one more increase. Hmm. It's not bad. Not at all. So yeah. That's it. That's it for us this week. We will not be recording. Yeah, well, we'll see you guys in a week. We took last week off. Mm -hmm. so this It'll is probably be late. Last week, but, but yeah. Um, yeah, we'll record probably Tuesday next week. Just depends on how wiped we are. Uh, Laura recovers more quickly than I do from all the mental stimulation. I, I need a cold, dark room for a little while after. Well, I work outside my house too. I think that's part that's of it. That's true. I'm used to interacting with people. A thousand children. Fifty nine children running around yeah. all day long. So. That's true, your tolerance is much higher than mine. There's um, that. That makes it sound like we have to tolerate people. That's not the case. <laughs> uh, it's as much as I enjoy interacting with everybody at SSK, and I genuinely do. Like you, you don't see me there without a smile on my face because I'm very happy to be there and to be interacting. You're with just everybody. more introverted than it I am. It just takes a toll, and I just, I, you know, I have to take breaks. And Laura's really good about that. So, um, I think that's Except it. Except I'm taking all the classes. <laughs> That's fine. She can take all the classes. I can take quiet breaks. That's fine with me. It all works out. <laughs> we will see you guys next week. Yep. Have a good one. And if we are going to see you at SSK, then yeah, yay. Otherwise, Come say hi. Hopefully we'll see some of you at the market too. Yeah, that's true. That'll be fun. Um, otherwise, we hope you guys have a good week and we'll yeah. see you next week. Bye y'all.